the Russian World Cup is coming. A terrifying, corrupt beast of a competition coming to piss in the pure white snow of our beautiful game's most beautiful expression. If you've seen or heard anything about this tournament in the seven years since it was announced, you can be forgiven for wanting nothing to do with it. A bloated tournament run by corrupt officials, corruptly awarded to a corrupt nation. A corrupt nation that doesn't even like football, we're told. And one that will greet those who travel to the tournament with a campaign of organised violence. Organised by the government, that is. Add to that a general climate of fear and suspicion of Russia and the distinct lack of an easily marketable national stereotype and it all adds up to a pre-tournament atmosphere the likes of which we've never seen before a World Cup. So far, so hellish. But you know what they say, don't believe everything you see in the press. Russia is a truly football country. Whatever you go, yeah, people play football, people watch football, people love football. really corresponds to the nature of Russian person, yeah, as a citizen and the whole country adores and loves football in a way that it is supported by millions of citizens. From Soviet there was a very strong national team, like that became a European champion in 1916. We have Lev Yashin, a legendary goalkeeper. Football during the Soviet times was, was a big mass sport with a, quite a wide range of people attending it. I mean, socially, culturally, very different people are attending football matches with huge attendances. In the Soviet Union, there was a conversation that the fans of the fans of the other brother and the other brother and the other brother. То есть в фанатском противостоянии такого не было, фанаты друг другу помогали. It was like a, one of the few, if not the only, things when you could have been free. You can express your real feelings and your real emotions. In the post-Soviet era, the national team hasn't seen much success. But despite a sometimes fractious relationship between fans and the players, it's still a unifying force in the country. As soon as the national team play, Everyone supports the national team. There is a really expectation and kind of hope for Russians to show something solid at this tournament, to get this out, all these emotions that are stored somewhere, but really want to go out and to show their proudness for their national team. The notion that Russia is not a football country is one of many slights perceived by Russians. It was striking how everywhere we went, we got a sense of people still feeling judged by a conceptual notion of the West. They are intensely aware of how they're being held up. There are two parts of the story. On the West, as I say to you, we are always shown to you as like unfriendly, cold, whatever, 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 all the stereotypes fill in the blanks. But there is a huge propaganda work on this side, unfortunately, of the border where we say that, look, these are Westerners, these are bad, these are all the time dreaming about seeing our country in ruins. There's quite a few cliches that some of them are cultured by, by media, some by the, on the internet, by Russian people themselves. I don't know what are the stereotypes. All people are different. You should watch more television. I really don't like that uh, there's this negative and big show that we are so aggressive, violent. Yeah, there are evidence yeah, that we witnessed uh, during the last big uh, uh, European event in France. The negative perceptions and general sense of mistrust on both sides of this lingering Iron Curtain certainly weren't helped by events in Marseille during Euro 2016. Shocking images of hooliganism caused widespread fear about the potential of violence come 2018. What happened in Marseille was rather unique. No one really saw it coming. Such event hasn't happened in Russia for the last 10 years. Marseille was a horrible thing, but it had a very important implication inside the country. That was another issue where we could publicly discuss just a second, what is going on inside this fan base? And that is actually the point that makes us all very, very optimistic about our future.